Well, first of all, I salute, like I said yesterday, if you guys see my social media platform, I, I salute the NFL, the coaches, the players, the owners, uh, the fans, everyone that had anything or any association with the NFL yesterday was unbelievable. It was uh, solitary, um, solidarity, and uh, there was no, uh, there was no divide. There's no divide, even from, um, even from that guy that, that continues to try to divide us as people. And uh, like I said on, on one of my social media platforms uh, a couple of days ago, the thing that that kind of frustrated me and pissed me off a little bit is the fact that he's now, he 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 used sport, he used the sports platform to try to divide us and sport and sports is so it's so it's so amazing what what sports can do for everyone no matter the the, the shape or size or, or race or ethnicity or religion or whatever people find teams people find players people find colors because of sport and they just gravitate towards that and they just, it just make them so happy and and it brings people together like none other. And um, we're not going to let, I'm not going to let, while well, I have this platform, to let one individual, no matter the power, no matter the, the, the impact that, that he should have or she should have, um, ever use sport as a platform to divide us. And then you go to the other side and when you don't talk about sports and they try to divide us from that side as well. And the one thing that I can say and, and, and just think about is um, how can uh, we personally, throughout everything that that guy is doing, um, no matter if you voted for him or not, you may have made a mistake and that's okay. If you voted for him, it's okay. I mean, I've, done things for my kids and realized I shouldn't have gave my daughter that many damn Skittles. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. She won't go to sleep now. Can we sit up here and say that um, I'm trying to make a difference? Um, and can we sit up here and say that I can look myself in the mirror and say that I want the best for the American people, no matter no matter the skin color, no matter the race, no matter how tall or athletic you are or whatever the case may be, can we sit up here and say that we are trying to make a difference? Um, because we know this is the greatest country in the world. It's the land of the free. But we still have problems just like everybody else. And when we have those problems, we have to figure out a way how we come together and be as great as we can be as a people. Um, because the people run this country, not one individual. And damn sure not him. Yeah, so um, as I got this platform and as I, people, I have a, a way to inspire and I have a way for my word to be, to be bond, um, I will lend my voice, I will lend my passion, I will lend my money, um, I will lend my resources to my youth and, and my inner city and outside of my inner city to let these kids know that, you know, there is hope, there is, uh, there's greater walks of life and not one individual, no matter if it's the President of the United States or if it's someone in your household, can stop your dreams from becoming a reality. And it's that simple. Or maybe not that simple if you can't appreciate it. Hey, Bron, Tom Withers, AP again. Do you, is there any regret that you got into a name-calling situation with the President? No. A name-caller? What did I say? Call Let me hear you say it. Call him a bum. <laughs> it's not a name call. It's a, uh, nice. you bum. Me and my friends call each other that all the time. I'm not his friend though. Don't ever, don't, I don't want to see that on the note. I, he's not my friend. Hey, it, but uh, no, no, that was the first thing that when I woke up and saw what he said about Steph Curry, first of all, <laughs> it's so funny because it's like you invite me to your party, right? But matter of fact, it's not, it's not like you invited me. It's almost like, you know, Tom, hey, I'm not going to be able to make it. I'm not coming. <laughs> and then you'd be like, hey, LeBron, guess what? You're not invited. <laughs> I wasn't coming anyways. <laughs> so that was funny to me when I woke up and saw that. So my, and my first initial response was, you, you bum. You, you, I can't. First of all, you, you, 
you don't understand the magnitude and you don't understand he doesn't understand the power that he has for being the leader of this beautiful country he doesn't understand how many kids no matter the race look up to look up to the president of the united states for for guidance for leadership for for words of encouragement he doesn't understand that and that's what makes me more that's what makes me more sick than anything that we have someone as this is the most this is the number one position in the world do you guys agree being the president of the united states is the most powerful position in the world i, I don't know of another one and if, if you can find one let me know it's the most powerful position in the world and we are at a time where the most powerful position in the world has an opportunity to bring us closer together as a people and inspire the youth and put the youth at ease on saying that it is okay for me to walk down the street and not be judged because of the color of my skin or because of my race. And he has no recollection of that. And he doesn't even care. Maybe he, had, he, maybe he does, but he doesn't care. So do I take away, do I say, uh, do I just say, take away you bum off my, no, because if I did, I would have deleted my tweet. Do you find it, is there, is there a positive in all this, Bron, in that Absolutely, he's, the conversation. he's awakened people and conversations the, are happening? The conversation has happened. Me, uh, me D-Wade, Mello, and CP stood on the, on the biggest night of sports at the ESPYs. Stood on the stage. That's the biggest night in sports where all our colleagues from all over the world, all the sports and champions and you know, people who, who've been praised all over the world for their accomplishment over that, that last year. And we stood on stage and, and we understood the magnitude that we were headed into. So I love the fact that the conversation has started. I watched Sunday Countdown yesterday at 10 o'clock. And for the first 20 minutes, uh, Charles Woodson, uh, you know, uh, Rex Ryan, uh, Randy Moss, uh, those guys, um, and those guys all sat up there and talked about it for 30 minutes. And Rex Ryan, if you guys saw it, said he supported Trump in the beginning. And he voted for Trump and gave Trump money and, and actually had, said, had, had a rally for Trump. And he said he don't know if he made the right choice. So the conversation is being had. Brian Scott Sargent, WFNY. You started off your kind of presentation about the unifying measures in the NFL and how proud you were to see that. A lot can change between now and October 17th, but do you foresee anything like that trickling down through the NBA? Um, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if something trickled down uh, to the NBA um, if no change happened between now and the 17th. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Steve Ashburn or NBA.com. You live and work in a state in which the majority of voters voted for the current president, um, some of whom, many of whom probably had valid reasons beyond his Twitter account or his, his social graces. How do you reconcile having called that choice a mistake that many of those people are also Cavaliers fans? Well, I mean, that's a, that's a great question. Um, At the end of the day, like I said, you can, um, I don't think a lot of people was educated. And, and, um, and I think that's the biggest, one of the biggest problems that we have when it becomes vote time, that people are just not educated on either the individual or what's actually going on in the state of, of the world right now. Not like that particular state, but in the state of the world. I don't think a lot of people are educated and um, they, make choice, they make choices and say things that's uneducated. And, and am I saying that the people of Ohio wasn't educated? Am I saying that some of the other states that voted for him was, un, was uneducated? Um, they could have been or they could not have been, but that doesn't mean that it was the right choice. Um, I mean, you can, you can go back into the history of time of sports and, and, and say the same thing because we keep – bringing sports and politics into it. So you can look back at some of the greatest drafts of all time and say that, okay, did the Trailblazers make the right choice when they took Sam Bowie? 
I mean, can we all sit up here and say that they should have took Michael Jordan? Yes or no? So, um, you know, for me, for me as a professional athlete in this state, and even though this state voted for Trump, that doesn't stop me inspiring this peop the people of this state and inspiring the youth. Because I would be even more at wrong if I started to down the people of Ohio. That makes zero sense. My job is, and my calling is much bigger than that guy. I don't even like saying his name. So while I have this platform, I will continue to inspire the state of Ohio, not only by what I do on the floor, but also by putting 1,300 kids in the school and spending almost $45 million. LeBron, Harry Boomer, Channel 19, how are you? Fantastic. Good to see, good to see you. Good to see you, too. Uh, question for you. You drawn a long line of African-American athletes, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, um, Muhammad Ali, in speaking out. There have been others who have supposedly looked at the bottom line and said, it is not advantageous for me dollar-wise to speak up and speak out on issues that could be divisive. Your thoughts on the monetary aspect of, did you think you might lose some money, or do you really care about that at this point? I can only speak for myself. I can't, I can't speak for none other. Um, I definitely know the people that's uh, paved the way for myself today. And you, you talk about guys like, you know, Muhammad Ali and, and Jim Brown and you know, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Bill Russell, Jesse Owens, Jackie Robinson, Austin Carr. These guys paved the way for guys like myself where I can just, I can feel confident about my words. I can feel confident about what I say and hopefully that it hits home for somebody. Um, I don't really get involved into the, 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 the money issue thing. Um, you know, because I, I mean, I'm, I'm doing okay for myself. My, <laughs> I'm, do, I'm doing okay for myself. My family's doing okay. Um, but even if we weren't doing okay um, financially, I would still be trying to find a way to just better the youth and, and inspire the youth. So, but like I said, I can only speak for myself. You turn his mic up. Rick Nolan from the Medina Gazette. Um, if things aren't improved by the 17th, could you ever see yourself um, doing something out of the NFL or taking a knee during the anthem? Or um, how would you feel if you didn't do it, if any of your teammates did? Um, listen, I think uh, we all have uh, the right to express our feelings about whatever that's going on in that particular time. And I, I can respect that from my teammate or respect that from anybody in the league. Um, you know, for me personally, I, my voice, for me personally, is more important than my knee. I talk to you guys every single day. And what I say, I think it should hit home for a lot of people and know where I stand. Uh, I don't believe that I have to get on my knee for me to even further what I'm talking about. But do I, I don't down anybody that's doing it in the NFL. I salute Colin Kaepernick for being as powerful as he was and and being the one that he had to fall on the sword, unfortunately. And I hate that. And I hope that some NFL owner, I wish I owned the NFL team right now, I'll sign him today. Um, but I'm not. Um, but I think my voice and, and what I do in my community and what I stand for, um, I don't think that I have to show you guys more by getting on a knee or, or doing something else or trying to create something else. Um, but I think it's, it's powerful what the, all these athletes are doing. You know, we even had the first baseball player to do it two nights ago, I believe, wasn't it? Two nights ago? That's, that's phenomenal. So... And I commend these guys, and I commend everybody that's just trying to make a difference. Because it's not about, sorry, to, let's, we need to get this. It's not about the disrespect of the flag and our military and everybody that has made this world free. It is about equality and people having the option and the freedom to speak upon things that they feel that's not unjust. It's not about the disrespect of the flag, and I hope... 
if anybody have anyone here that has any family members in the military or anybody that's ever been in any walks of life to try to save this world, because I do not. I have no family members. But I, I do understand that this is not a disrespect to the men and women who have served our world to help us become free. It's not about that. And, and the, the people that's trying to divide us they are the ones who are trying to say that is a disrespect to the military families and to the people who served our country. It is not about that. It's the furthest away from that. Sorry. Jason Lloyd, The Athletic. You've made your feelings abundantly clear on the president. Dan has an opposite view, obviously. He's been a financial supporter of, of Trump. He was at the White House in June. Donald called him a, a good friend, I, I believe. Has that had any impact on your relationship with him, and is that anything that you guys have discussed? Uh, we have not discussed it face-to-face. Uh, -face. Um, it has no impact. Um, I think if, you know, just things when you put yourself in a position, um, you know, like that, to even stand close to the guy like that, I think he would call. If anyone stand next to that guy, I think you all say you, you guys are close friends. He doesn't even know you. I just think that's just how irrational his mind is. Um, you know, I can't speak for Dan. He's, a, he's his own man, and I can't speak for the situation that happened. I can't speak for that, and uh, he, got, he can tell you about that. But, um, you know, I think for me as a player of this franchise, then, um, you know, I got to just continue to, to do what I can do to uh, help better this, uh, you know, better this team, better – better the conversation and continue to inspire. But I can't, it hasn't changed my relationship um, and it hasn't changed my outlook on, on the situation. You guys know how I feel about that.